you guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys six different looks using the e.l.f. bite-sized eyeshadow palettes. I did post a video a couple of weeks ago where I tried these out for the first time and did a look using the Truffles palette, but you guys seemed really interested in these palettes and wanted to see some looks using some of the other ones. So I decided to do a look with each one of these palettes, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently than I typically do. As I mentioned, I already have done a look with the Truffles palette, which I will link right here if you are curious to see how this one performs. And I also wanted to mention that I don't have the blue palette. I could not get my hands on that one, but I do have these six right here and we're gonna be trying them out today. Before we get into it, I want to give you guys a little bit of a heads up, a bit of a spoiler. I really love these palettes, but I don't think that they work amazingly well on their own for the most part. Most of them I feel like you really need to combine a couple of palettes together to get the shades that you would need to create a complete look. So a handful of these looks I feel like did not go very well, but I'll go into more detail about each palette individually at the end of the video, so be sure to stick around to the end if you want to hear my thoughts on each individual palette or which ones I think pair the best together. But I hope you guys are excited about this one. If you are new to my channel, I want to welcome you. I hope that you'll consider subscribing if you have not done that yet. Of course, if you enjoy this video, give it a big thumbs up. If nothing else, give me a thumbs up up or an attaboy for trying out this bold blue eyeshadow all over my lid, which did not go so well, but that's okay. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump in to the video and test out these eyeshadow palettes. So before I zoom you guys in and we get started, I want to kind of walk you guys through how this video is going to go. So I'm going to do a different palette on each eye. For the first couple of looks, I'm not going to be adding additional mascara and liner. I do have a little bit of mascara on right now, like just a tiny bit, but I'm really just going to be showing you guys an eyeshadow look that you could get out of each palette. For the first set, we're going to use the Rose Water Palette on one eye, the Pumpkin Pie Palette on the other. For the second set, we're going to use the Carnival Candy Palette on one eye and the Berry Bad Palette on the other. And then for for the third set, I'm going to use the same palette. This is the Cream and Sugar palette, which is the most basic and kind of neutral palette of the bunch. It has the lightest shades in here. It does have a true champagne. A lot of the other ones have more medium tones in them, but I want to use this same palette on both eyes, but do a different look with it. So on one eye, we're going to do kind of an everyday, no makeup, makeup look type of look. On the other eye, we'll do something a little bit more deep and smoky and bronzy. But then for my last set of looks, we are going to do a full-on makeup look using the Hot Jalapeno palette. This is the one that you guys seem to be most excited to see me try out, or at least the majority of you seem to be the most excited about. So we're going to going to do a full look with this very beautiful yellow and green palette. I'll add real liner, more mascara, and show you guys what a completed look will look like with this palette right here. So I hope that this sounds helpful for you guys. I know this is not going to be quite as extensive or give you a full idea of what a full makeup look will look like, but it's definitely going to be helpful for me to be able to film this video for you guys in one day and not destroy my eyelids or my eyelashes. So now we'll go ahead and zoom you guys in and we will get started with our first set. All right guys, we're gonna kick things off with this one right here. This is the Rose Water Palette. I have actually already worn this palette and it is lovely. I really did enjoy it. Before we get into the look, I just wanna show you guys what these shades look like swatched on my finger. So here they are right here. Now let's go ahead and just start off with the look on this side. I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. This is a matte, very soft grayish purple. It's a really beautiful shade. This is one that is very, very subtle. I find you really need to build this one up if you have medium to light skin. If you have very fair skin, it might show up a little bit better more quickly on you. It's one of those shades though that's kind of like a barely there sort of shade, but it is there and it does make for a really nice soft building block for a really neutral and soft look, which I feel like is kind of just the vibe of this palette anyways. I'm going to take that same shade on this Juvia's Place Small Buffer Brush and we're just going to run that pretty low under the lower lash line. I'm almost going right in my socket down here. Now I'm going to take this darker shimmery shade right here and on an Alomar Cosmetics, just a flat kind of packing brush or concealer brush, I'm just going to start packing that on this outer corner. Okay, this brush is too small. Let's use my finger because that's what I normally do. You can use a brush. It works well with a brush. This is a really pretty mid-tone shimmery shade. It's not too dark, but it's also not too light. Now I'm going to go in with the lighter toned shimmer, which is kind of like a cool toned shell pink. And I'm going to pop that all over the inner half of the lid. These two shades layer beautifully. And now I want to add just a little bit of depth to the outer corner. So we're going to take that dark color right here. As I mentioned before, I have used this palette once already. And I did find, and I found this with quite a few of these palettes, that the deepest, more matte shades can be a little bit tricky to blend. So I recommend going in with a light layer. And sometimes I think it's helpful just to kind of 
tap them on before you blend. But this is a really pretty color. And just with what is left on that brush, I'm just going to run that right under this outer corner. All right, and that completes my first look using the rose water palette. Let's move into the pumpkin pie palette on the other eye. So this one, as you can see, everything is pretty much a mid-tone. Let me just finger swatch these for you guys so you can kind of see how they look swatched on my fingers. This one I think is really pretty, but I do think the differentiation of shades in here is a little bit more subtle. You get a neutral bronze and a neutral crease color along with a warm bronze and a warm crease color. So I'm not quite sure how to work all four of these shades into a look. But let's start off by going in with the warmer crease color. And I'm going to take that on my Morphe M504 brush and just buff this right above my crease. Then I'm going to go in with my Juvia's Place small buffer brush into that same color. We're going to run that under the lower lash line. I kind of want to blow this out a little bit right on this outer corner and kind of really pull that further out than I usually do. All right, now I'm going to take the deeper of the brown colors and we're going to take the Morphe M507 brush, the smaller blending brush. I'm going to try and add a little bit of depth just through this crease area. This color is just a little bit deeper. Still not super deep though. This is definitely one of the palettes that I feel like, unless you like those one shadow kind of look looks, it might not be enough for you to create a full look. So I think I want to go in with the warmer shimmer. The palette that we're using later that has this bronze is a little bit cooler, kind of matches this one a little bit, maybe a little bit lighter in tone, but I kind of want to keep this eye pretty warm. So I'm just going to take that shimmery warm bronze and we're going to pop that all across the lid. I'm really craving something shimmery in my inner corner, but I know not everybody does an inner corner highlight. And some people like to go deep all the way in. I'm going to also take that warm bronze just on this flat little shader brush and we're going to pop a little bit of this under the center of the lower lash line. And that's pretty much it. I feel like that's about all you could probably do with this palette. I don't know that this is a palette you get a lot of versatility out of, but it is a pretty bronze eye. All right, so here are my two looks using the rose water palette and the pumpkin pie palette. Now let's move on to the next two. Moving on to the carnival candy palette. So here it is swatched on my fingers. So pretty. I will say this blue, that's an intimidating blue. It's beautiful. But it's one that intimidates me a little bit. I hate to not use it because I feel like if you're interested in this palette, it's probably for that blue color. So I feel like I should use that all over. I just, I have a feeling I'm not going to end up liking the look if I do that. But we'll give it a try. So I'm going to start off in this palette by going in with the kind of lighter flesh tone color. I would say this is like a flesh tone color for someone that has medium to light skin. If you have fair skin, this might work as a good transition shade for you. Or if you have medium to deep skin, it might work as a good highlight shade for you. What am I doing? One eye, Andy. One eye. It's not really showing up a whole lot on me, but that's okay. I'm going to actually combine these two shades together to get a little bit lighter of a transition color and pop that right above my crease. I'm also going to combine those two for my lower lash line. And I want this color to go pretty low on the lower lash line because we're going to use that blue on top. So we're going to go ahead and pop that blue just all over the lid and I might add a little bit of this dark kind of reddish brown to the outer corner and to the lower lash line. I do want to use a brush for this though. I'm going to take my Juvia's Place small definer brush, which is kind of just a concealer type brush, and I'm going to pack that onto the brush and then just start... Ugh packing it onto the eye. I might go in with my finger, but I want to lay it down with the brush first just to get a little bit more precise application. If this look ends up looking bad, it may not be the shadows. It might be more my inexperience at using colors like this. Okay, yeah, I feel like this looks awful. <laughs> okay, we're going with my finger. 
This color definitely lays down better with the finger. It's a little bit more rich. So here's a palette that I kind of feel like, for me, I have a hard time getting a full look out of this palette because I feel like I need something else to blend that blue out or to scale that blue back on my inner corner. But we're going to try and just blend it out with my M507 brush. This is clean. I'm just going to lightly run that over the edges. I feel like this looks awful, but I don't think it's the eyeshadow. The eyeshadow looks really pretty. I can't make a color like this work without something like this to go with it. At least not in a way that I think is wearable for me. I want to try and just blend and soften that corner by going in with the brick red. This is the color I think is like the prettiest color in here. I love, oh I love that type of a color. It's going to start applying that kind of through this outer corner. Not sure what that's going to do to this color. I kind of feel like it's turning it purple. I'm just going to kind of blend that on the lower lash line. Now I'm going to go in with the lightest shade in the palette and take that on my Juvia's Place small buffer and I just want to start blending that in towards the blue just to see if I can brighten that and just get a little bit better of a blend right there. I don't know guys, I do not feel like the trouble with blue eyeshadow for me, I feel like I need multiple shades of blue to get them to kind of blend together and work together so they're not just like one blue all over the lid. I just don't think that looks good on me. I've seen other people make it work and make it look good and honestly I don't know how to make this work. This is just not a color that is in my wheelhouse you guys and I don't know how to make it work just with what I'm given in this palette. You might be able to but I personally just... Not a fan of this look. Not, this is just not really like a me color story other than those three colors right there. But I tried. I tried the blue. Please give me a pat on the back just for trying to do blue eyeshadow all over my lid. Definitely not one of my best looks at all. I feel like it's a little dark right there. But again, I think that's really all user error. But that's as good as this look is going to get today. Oh, I'm going to hate posting this. But you guys saw it. I know you wanted to see that blue. So... Let's just move on. <laughs> Let's go into the Berry Bad palette next. So here are the finger swatches of the Berry Bad palette. Very, very pretty. This is another one I'm really excited about. So for this one, we're going to start off with the lightest matte on my M504 brush. This shade might be my favorite transition shade in all of the palettes that I've tried so far. Oh, I just love this pinky peach color. It's really subtle, but it's just right for my skin tone. That same color I'm going to take my Juvia's Place Small Buffer Brush and build that up on the lower lash line. Now I'm going to add some depth with this darker matte shade and my M507 brush. I'm going to apply this just starting on the outer corner and blending it into the inner third of the lid. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of that on the same brush and just run it under the lower lash line. And now I want to go in with the pink toned color right here. And we're going to pop that all over. And now back in with the darker matte shade. I'm just going to add a little bit more of this to the outer corner to blend out that edge. So here's the finished look with the Berry Bad palette. I really do like this one. This is one of the easiest ones that I've worked with so far as far as all of the shadows just being really easy to work with. I think it's really pretty. You could add some shimmer to the lower lash line if you wanted to. I usually don't like doing that because I find it emphasizes the fine lines that I have under there. I would love to pop a little bit of champagne on the inner corner as well with this look. But this is what it looks like just with this palette alone. Now let's go ahead and wipe these off and we'll move on to the next one. Alright guys, I'm back with the cream and sugar palette. So we're going to do a very soft and neutral look on this side and then I'm going to do something a little bit more deep and bronzy and smoky on this side. Starting off on the first side, we're going to go in with the lightest matte shade on my Morphe M504 and I'm just going to brush that through my crease. I don't imagine this is going to give me a lot of color. I would say this is just a half a shade darker than my natural skin tone. If you have tan to medium skin, this might be a really nice highlight color on you. Now I'm going to dip into the two matte shades together because I want to get something kind of in between these two shades and we're going to run that right through the socket. 
I just want that to give me a hint of a shadow right there. Now I want to take this darker shimmer shade on my M504 brush and we're just going to lightly dust that all over the lid. I'm using this on a brush because I want it to be a little bit more soft, not quite as foiled and reflective. And I'm also going to take that shimmer on my Juvia's Place Small Buffer Brush and we are going to run this color under the lower lash line. And I want to take that darker brown shade on my Morphe M507 and we're going to add just a little bit of depth right to this outer corner right here. But not too much. I just want to add the tiniest bit of this color right here just to smoke out this corner the tiniest bit. Alright, and now I'm going to take the Shimmery Champagne and we're going to pop that on the inner third of the lid. I'm going to take my M507 brush, which I cleaned off, and we're going to take a tiny bit of that same shimmery shade and just dust that right on the inner tear duct. Okay, so there is the soft everyday eye with that palette. Now I'm going to go on the other side and do something a little bit more dramatic and smoky if I can. And I just realized that I forgot to finger swatch this one for you guys, so let me do that now. There are the shades. So I'm going to start off by going in with the darker and lighter matte mixed together. And we're going to try and just build that up through the crease. So I'm noticing this brown is not as chocolatey as I wish it was. And by that I mean it's not as rich and not necessarily warm, but as rich. Feeling. It has almost like a gray kind of charcoal base to it where when you blend it out you start to kind of get this gray tone. If you're into matte browns and you're picky with your matte browns, this is definitely one that I feel like is very ashy. And some people might enjoy that. If you do not like warm browns on your eyes at all, this would be a great brown because it's, it's not very warm. It's a very cool toned brown. So I'm just taking my brush and dipping into these two shades and kind of slowly building it across my lid just to build up the depth a little bit. Okay, and now that I've got that color built across my lid, I want to go in with my M507 brush and we're going to dip into just the brown alone and see if we can add a little bit more depth through the crease and just to the outer corner here. It is giving really nice depth. I have to say, I feel like that looks better as I'm building it than I initially thought it would. Still does have that cooler undertone to it, but it's pretty. All right, now I'm going to take the darker bronze and we're going to pack that all over the lid just with my finger. And I'm going to go in with my Morphe M504 brush and just blend out the edge of that shimmer. And one more time in with my M507 with a tiny bit more of the deep matte brown. Blend that through this outer corner. Okay, and with what's left on my brush, I'm just going to run that under the lower lash line. And then I have wiped off my M507 brush. I'm going to dip in to the Shimmery Champagne and add just a little bit of this to the very inner part of the lid. And then I just want to try adding a tiny bit of this shimmery champagne right below the center of my brow. And that's pretty much it for the chocolatey eye. I would definitely prefer to do a traditional either pencil or gel wing liner with this and a lot of mascara. But I am pretty happy with how this applied and how it blended. So I'm now going to wipe this off and then we're going to do my final look using the Hot Jalapeno palette. Alright guys, I am back for my final look and we are going to do a full look with this one. So the same on both sides, we'll add some liner, add more mascara at the end. So I want to start off by going into this lighter green matte shade right here. And I'm going to start just slowly buffing that through my crease. Okay, I really am loving this color though. Can you guys see that just soft green color? That's lovely. I'm just building a little bit more up through this outer corner. Same color. Next I'm going to take that same matte green color on my Juvia's Place Small Buffer Brush. 
we're going to run this under the lower lash line. Now I want to start building just a little bit more of this lighter matte green on the outer half of the lid. So I'm just starting my placement right on the outer corner and then just kind of feathering it in. Okay, so I am so far loving how these are working and looking. I love this kind of smoky khaki green color. I know that it's looking a little bit patchy on the center of my eyelid, but we're going to cover that up with the shimmer, so I'm not too worried about that. Before we go into the shimmers, I want to dip into the matte deep green and add just a little bit of depth to my outer corner with this. I will probably add a little bit more after I put the shimmers on, but I want to start off with a little bit of this down and also just get an idea of if this is going to be patchy and kind of just the tone of it. That is beautiful. Oh, this is pretty, you guys. So we're going to go in with this shimmery green now. I'm going to pop this all over the center two-thirds of my lid. Oh, wow. That's fun. There is a color I don't own very many of. And this is certainly not a color I would wear out very often, but it's pretty. However, I do think that if you're not into the lime green, if that's just a little bit outside of your comfort zone range. You could just skip the lime green altogether and just go straight in with kind of the yellowy gold and that I think would give you a little bit more of a neutral look. Now I'm just going to go back into my M507 brush. There's nothing else on this brush. I just want to diffuse this edge right here. And now I'm going to take the yellow and we're going to add a little bit of this to the inner corner. I'm just going to use my finger. I want this to slightly overlap the green. Okay, I'm actually going to take a flat shader brush. This is from Alamar Cosmetics. And we're going to use that just to add a little bit of this also to the lower tear duct area. I'm now taking just a tiny bit of that dark matte green shade on this Juvia's Place small buffer brush. And I'm just going to run this kind of right where the corner of my upper and lower lash line meet and almost flick it out in like a wing sort of motion just to give me a little bit of a wing there. All right, and now I'm going to add some liner. Let's go in with my Wet n Wild Brown Liner. Then I'm gonna add a couple of coats of mascara. I will zoom you guys out, show you the final look and share my final thoughts. All right, you guys, so here's the finished look with the Hot Jalapeno Palette. I have to say this is my favorite look that I did of the bunch. And I think the reason for that is you really do get the range that you need in this palette. Now, it is not a color story I would wear every day, but I also feel like for a bold color, it's somewhat wearable. And I think this gold really kind of tones things down in a little bit more of a neutral way. Even my husband commented on my eye look today and said he really, really loved how golden and green my eyes were. He rarely comments on my eyeshadow. So I feel like that's a big deal. When he comments, I listen. But I do want to spend just a couple of minutes going through each of the palettes and give you guys just kind of my thoughts in general and also what palette I think would pair best with the palette because I did mention in the beginning and kind of throughout this video that I feel like these work best when you combine a couple of them together. Starting off with the Hot Jalapeno palette. You can certainly get a full look out of this palette probably better than most of the other ones that I tried. I love this look I created today. However, if you want to scale things back just a little bit, I would probably recommend either pairing it with the Pumpkin Pie palette because this is going to give you some of the best transition shades or the Cream and Sugar palette. This is the palette that's going to give you the best range and this is probably one that I'll recommend pairing with most of the ones inside of here. But this one was really easy to work with. I love the formula. The mattes were easy to blend. The shimmers are beautiful and bold and vibrant. I think the shimmery green is more of a satin shimmer, more of a smooth finish shimmer, whereas the yellow is a little bit more of a chunky kind of shimmer. So I will say this, some of the chunky your shimmers in here if you have more mature eyelids or if you have texture on your eyelids or folds in your eyelids. I do have some folds on my eyelids. I also have a little bit of texture right here on my inner corner and I do find these to emphasize that a little bit. Not to the point where I wouldn't wear them but give me 10 years and that might be a different story. So just keep in mind if you are sensitive to texture some of the shimmers in some of these palettes 
are a little bit more foiled and not quite as mature skin or texture friendly. I will say the same thing is true with the champagne in the cream and sugar palette. As much as I love it, it is a shimmer that does emphasize texture just a little bit. But I do still feel like this is probably the palette I would pick up alongside the other palettes if you're picking up one of the other color stories. I want to mention this though, unless you have very, very fair skin, you're not going to really find a transition shade that works well for you. You can combine the two mattes together to get a transition shade, but this is a very cool toned brown as I mentioned in my demonstration of this palette and even combining those together I didn't really love the transition shade that that created if you are someone that relies on a good transition shade whether you're traveling or throwing these in your purse or just getting ready for the day I would probably recommend the pumpkin pie palette or even the carnival candy palette both of those give you really good transition shades that are just very basic kind of warm to neutral browns let's talk briefly about the carnival candy palette this palette I feel like I still need to gather my thoughts around I strongly disliked the look that I created with this palette. As much as I think this is a beautiful blue, it's just not a color that I'm familiar with putting all over my eyes. And I also feel like the colors that they gave you inside of here made it difficult to make this blue work for me personally. However, I really do love these three matte colors together. I just have a really hard time with blues all the way in on my lid. I don't feel like it looks great. I have a hard time getting the blend really nice and seamless. So if you're not super experienced with blue eyeshadow, I think you might struggle putting this all over your lid. However, it probably would make a really beautiful liner shade. And I think the formula is really, really nice. The Berry Bad palette. This is one of my favorites. Surprisingly, I loved the transition shade in here. It was a very nice, soft, peachy pink that just went on beautifully. I really, really enjoyed that. I love the shimmers inside here. These were both more of the kind of satin shimmers that look really nice and kind of a little bit more smoothing on the eyelids. And I loved this dark shade right here. This palette, I feel like would pair beautifully with the cream and sugar palette because this one's gonna give you the lighter inner corner shade that I feel like this palette really needs. Also gives you a deep matte brown that would pair beautifully I think with this warm kind of red berry tone right here. And I feel the exact same way about the pumpkin pie palette. This is another one that is one of my favorites. I knew this probably would be one of my favorites because a great transition shade is a necessity for me. And this gives you such a good warm transition shade. And this shade, it does give you a little bit more depth. The same thing is true with the shimmers inside here. They are both more of a satin shimmer, which I absolutely love on my eyelids. But the difference between the two is very subtle. It's there, but it is very subtle. So keep that in mind. These aren't going to be colors that you probably would combine with each other. You probably would pick one or the other, but they are both beautiful. And again, I think paired with especially the cream and sugar palette, this is going to give you the variety that you need to create a full and complete look. Lastly, the rose water shade. This was a beautiful palette. The look was very soft. I've used this one a couple of times now, and each time I think the look is very soft and subdued, but I really love these two shimmers right here. And even this transition shade, you really have to build this one up, but the shimmers are so pretty pretty and soft in here. I really love them. I really love the tone of this matte shade right here as well. I did find this matte shade to be a little bit more difficult to blend and build and I felt the same way about the ones in the Truffles palette. These deeper matte browns and this kind of more blacky brown right here. These were a little bit tricky to blend as well. Not the easiest deep matte shades I've ever worked with and I felt the same way about this one. So in conclusion, I am a big fan of these palettes. I think for the price, for the size and the travel ability or the travel friendliness of them. If you are looking for something travel friendly and you want to do it on a budget, these are a fantastic option. I do not think the formula of these shimmers or mattes are the best formulas I've ever worked with, but I think for e.l.f., e.l.f. for me has had a track record of being very inconsistent with their eyeshadow formulas, and I think for the most part, these are some of their better formulas that I've worked with, but for the price, they are pretty incredible, and I know not everybody can afford to go out and spend 30 or 40 or $50 on a palette to travel with, so if that sounds like you and you're just looking for something new or different to try out, or if you just want to try out some new eyeshadows for the sake of trying something new, but your budget is tight, these are a great way to do that and not break the bank, have some fun, try something different even do some mixing and matching I've really been enjoying them and reaching for them quite a bit and especially if you're willing to buy at least two of them I think that you'll have a lot of fun with these but that is it for my thoughts on these little bite-sized eyeshadow palettes I hope that you guys enjoyed this I would love to know which ones you guys have picked up if you've had a chance to try them out how are you liking them how are they working for you be sure to let us all know in the comments down below because I am just one person and often what works for me may not work for everybody so be sure to leave any
any feedback that you have down below. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. I really hope it was helpful for you. If you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love to have you on board. Hit that subscribe button. Also ring the notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. But I hope that you guys all have a good one. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. It's Friday afternoon. The kids are home early. There will probably be a lot of toilet flushing in this video. These elf bite shy bite shized. Using the hot tamale. No. That's wrong. And also if I had parsley in my teeth while I was reviewing this. I apologize. We had a tabula salad for lunch.